<laughs> All right. Okay. So this is the 30th episode of the Psychic Wave podcast, and I am with Alyssa Morrison hello, once again. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And uh, I reached out to you again because, uh, well, not only do I think you're cool, you did a web series. I did do a web series. I totally forgot about that. My yeah. mic just went out. I yeah. <laughs> so it, excited. If you get like a lot of air in it, it'll do that, but it's, yeah. it's not a big deal. Same. Um, so the Leading Lady web series. Leading Lady web series. Yeah. And uh, I binged it. Good. What did you think? Very good. It reminded me of... Um, so, okay. The first episode was a lot for me. Why? Because I think what the intent was, was to, the pilot was to, um, like create a basis for the way that the rest of the show is going to be and kind of show how the characters interact and just so much stuff was introduced. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we got into the second episode, I was like, ah, nice. It kind of slowed down a little bit for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, it, it was awesome. It reminded me of like a Judd Apatow meets like how I met your mother type thing, the way they yeah, interact. Kind of. And, uh, I liked it. Yay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the first episode is kind of your introduction to, because I mean, you're following this girl who's um, trying to be an actress. Um, Jane. Yes, Jane. And then you meet all of her roommates, uh, which. Yeah. Maybe that's why it was a little much for me, because when I meet that many people at once, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, this is true. And I mean, the first opening scene to the roommates is one of them's carrying a condom and it's yeah. like in her face. It's yeah. like, what is this, Jane? So yeah. maybe that was. It probably, a lot. yeah, my dog shit out a condom of mine once, um, <laughs> so. Of yours? Yeah, so, old apartment, like. Four, it wasn't used, was it? Oh, yeah, it was my condom. <gasps> oh, my Like, God. four or five years, years ago. Your dog and, ate it? Yeah, he was, like, a puppy, and he was, like, getting into, like, panties and, like, tampons and just anything that had a. Condom. Strong <laughs> DNA <laughs> uh, signature, I'll call it. And um, so I noticed something hanging out of his ass. And I was like, what the fuck? And he's my dog. I, ha you know, I had to go check it out. And I pulled out a condom that I had used from the night before. And um, yeah, so maybe the, the first episode was more just me kind of avoiding <laughs> like things that had happened to me. But... Um, <laughs> Roommates are hard, man. I think that's I think that's why it was like tough for me to be introduced to that many people at once. And I'm not shitting on the web series at all. It was just like your dog wasn't either. <laughs> he was not <laughs> shitting on the web series. I had a week where I kind of was having to deal with the fact that my semen was inside of my dog and went in one end and out the other. What a strong start to a podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Psychic Wave, guys. <laughs> yeah. Not me. I'm always fucking this shit up. Yeah. Anyway. Is sorry. it just when I'm here? No. And you know what I was going to bring up, too? Last time you were here, it was overcast and rainy. And now it's overcast and slightly sprinkly. Yeah, slightly sprinkly. Maybe one day we'll have a bright, sunny day. I don't think so. No. No, that doesn't happen. We're not bright, sunny people, Andrew. No. No. Um, I mean, we can be. We can be. Usually drugs are involved. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Usually um, it's a lot of beer. Beer, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're drinking Coors Light, and this isn't... You know what? This Bougie. actually is the first time I've ever had a Coors Light. What? Yeah. I've always avoided it because... Why? The people that I knew in high school that drank Coors Light were douchebags. So. Valid. I think the first Coors Light that I ever had, I think I was like... Oh my god, 15 or 16, and I was in a jacuzzi. Oh shit. And people were just like passing out. Cores. Yeah. And so I had one. Why not pass out a course to a 15, 16 year old girl in a hot tub? Yeah, I don't think they knew I was 15 or 16. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. It was like one of those apartment complexes. Uh. It was me and a friend. It wasn't just like me and the okay. jacuzzi by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm getting really concerned about past Alyssa. No, I mean, past Alyssa was interesting, but that was like, I think that was literally, that's the yeah. first beer that I ever had. Well, I think. That whole age, like weird shit like that just happens to everyone. But Coors Light, huh? First beer. Yeah. That's why it's bougie. It's bougie. Bougie. It's, like, it's a hot tub beer. It's a hot tub beer. It totally is a hot Who's tub Who's ever beer. had a bad time in a hot tub? Um. Yeah. No. Probably lots of 15, 16-year-olds. 
<laughs> so back to the subject. Um, so how did you get involved with the Leading Lady web series? So I actually, funny story. Um, I, Alex, um, Alex Hanno, he's the writer director of it. And he actually had, I think he actually had be cast already, but I think the actress might have like backed out or something. So mm -hmm. he had posted a, a notice on a casting site that I'm on. Mm. And I responded to it, and like within a couple hours, he was like, "Hey, can you come in tonight and read?" And I was like, "Oh, well, I'm on set, but I can try to be there." Yeah. And so I ended up showing up to this audition. I was in full '80s hair and makeup. Nice. And I had just threw it in a bun, and I was a mess. I had been up for like 14, 15 hours at this point, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting outside of the audition room looking at Facebook videos, mm -hmm. and just not there. But I ended up going in and. We ran it through probably about 10 times. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, he emailed me and was like, hey, you got the part, you're B to me. So I was like, dope. And yeah. so that's kind of how it happened. Nice. Yeah, um, that, you know, not having slept might have been uh, good for your role because you're kind of like a lazy... S I'm, I'm assuming this person's a stoner. Yeah, but she's a stoner. Okay. She's a complete stoner. I think she even says at one point. Um, oh, yeah. I think the last episode of the web series, she says something around the fire. I smoked pot 30 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. No, that was this morning. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I have to be unprofessional real quick. Oh, no. I can't put on. Oh, okay. Airplane mode because of the, yeah. the Wi-Fi. Yeah. So just kind of. It's fine. Deal with that. But, um. <clears throat> so you're on a casting website? Yeah. So what is that? It's called LA Casting. I don't know if you heard of it. No. <laughs> Such like a actor actress thing to say. I don't know if you ever heard of it. No, I don't know because <laughs> you said last time I was on here that you went through a short film or something. You auditioned you auditioned for one? Oh yeah, no, that was just through friends. Oh. Like just a friend thing that was put on. Okay, so then you haven't heard of it, which is no, fine. I have. <laughs> I was <laughs> I just being a dick. Have. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, just kidding. I know so little about that world. But. Okay, well, it's this site called LA Casting, and it's like if you're an actor or an actress or a model or whatever you are, um, you can go on to it and like make an account and then upload like pictures of yourself or like reels or whatever, and then you can submit to these casting notices that people mm. publish for like short films, student films, um, television, feature films, indie films, nice commercials, everything under the sun, and they have like a bunch of like headshot photographers and like classes and stuff like that. Cool. But yeah, that's one of them. Is there like a fee to be on this site? A what? A fee. Oh, a f I thought you said feed me. And I was like, <laughs> what does a feed me? <laughs> no, no. What does that mean? Uh, yes. Okay. I think it's I like figured. Yeah. 15 a month. Oh, it's not bad. But it's not bad because, I mean, it, technically if you're like booking from mm -hmm. the site. Yeah. Then what's $15 to a working actress? You well, know? I mean, you're not working all the time. That's not how it works. But, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So, had you, you never met Alex Hanno before? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, not before the audition. What's this dude like? He is, he's funny. He's very funny. He's very focused and he's very driven towards what he wants. Actually, everybody on that was. Mm -hmm. um, it was really cool people, really cool people, really cool group of it people. It was just really cool it people. It was just really cool people. Yeah. Uh, it was a really cool group of people to actually like connect with and film something with. They're all very supportive of each other. And I think they were all friends. Mm. Like okay. three out of Five of them are all roommates already. So everybody was like really just like tight knit. Mm, nice. Yeah. So you got the uh, you got the part. And then how long after that until you started like filming or talking with everybody about your uh, your role and stuff like that? How does that work? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it varies on every single project. It varies, but. yeah. I think with that one, I had about a month before we f actually filmed it. Um, it seems pretty short. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty quick. It was pretty quick. Yeah. Um, I mean, you watched it. All the episodes are under mm -hmm. like five minutes. Yeah. Um, so we filmed all of the roommate stuff in one day. Mm -hmm. So it was just one day of filming. Um, <laughs> In the real world. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was about a month, and then I did my work on my own, I guess, and then I showed yeah. up, and 
I think he already liked what I was doing with V. But if there was something like he would be like, hey, could you do it this way? Or maybe like this, this blah, blah, blah. So he would give me direction there. But mm-hmm. Yeah. What I liked about, because um, you said that they're, they're really short uh, videos, but what I liked about them is that each one, I felt like if I had seen it without seeing all the other ones, they could stand alone as like yeah. a, a good video to just watch on the internet. Completely, yeah. And uh, I thought that was really cool. And I think that that was on purpose. Um, and then... I think it was really well written as well because like especially episode two where Jane goes in because she doesn't get uh, the call back that she thought she was going to get. and She goes in to talk to her agent, um, Greta. Yes. And I fucking love the receptionist, Bridget. She's <laughs> so fucking funny to me. And that that whole video, although it was like only three, four minutes of actual acting. It was like there was something funny every 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. That To me, that shows that something's well written and yeah. like thought out because I've seen things before where it's like, wait, nothing's happening. Nobody's saying anything that's like catching my attention. But um, yeah, that was one of my favorite episodes. Episode two. That's good. Episode two is funny. Yeah. I don't know. I like awkwardness. Like I love yeah. like uh, The Office, Curb Your Enthusiasm, mm-hmm. things like that, where it's just like, why is life like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because it's true to life too because people just say things and then it's so out of the blue and so weird sometimes. They're just so like blunt and straightforward that you're just like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I Like there's one line in episode two. Oh, no, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Did you rewatch it recently? Yeah. Oh my god, I should have done that before I came in. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it's... I have a small level of professionalism. <laughs> like, when I do, like, very slight. I uh, do my research, but then also drink beer during it. That's relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. But I do take notes and stuff. When I... I, I watch, like, if... With you, I watched the first... I watch it all the way through without taking any notes, just watching it. And then I watched it later on, maybe a week later, and I took very few notes. And then I watched it today, and then I took better notes. I'm interested on your notes. Mm. <laughs> Bridget is smoking hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, uh, she is, but... Um, no. If I knew the actress's name, I'd shout her out right now, but I don't, and I'm so sorry. But Bridget, call him. No, no, don't. That was that was so rude. Of me. That was gross. That was a gross thing. Don't ever answer my calls. Um, I think you're a great actress. That was super funny. I, I loved that. But I was just, I don't know. Is it wrong to say somebody's hot? No. It'd be wrong if I like it's totally went not wrong. Ten percent further than just calling somebody hot. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's wrong. Some people are pretty. Some art's good. Some like arts I think bad. Jake Gyllenhaal's hot. Yeah. Have you seen Nocturnal Animals? Yes. Dude, I watched that the other day. Oh my God. Okay, so I have a tendency. What did you think? Loved it. It's so good. I have a tendency to like watch films. Like we talked about superhero movies out in the back there. And just movies where there's just so many plot holes and so many like things where it's like, but that one never like really happened. Mm -hmm. And this movie, I was like, that's great. I can't think of anything I would have changed, like a single thing. No, I literally went to the movie theater by myself when it came out and watched it. Yeah. And I sat in the movie theater for like half an hour after and was just like, what? Yeah. So good. What is my life? So good. Bad. <laughs> no, that was like, when I see stuff like that, it like, I, f- I feel like I can like go out and like, you know, direct my own thing or like, yeah. you know, write a good song. But it's just because it's so good. It like inspires you. It's just good art. Mm-hmm. Seeing good art makes mm-hmm. you want to go do stuff. But yeah. I really need to rewatch it. That was one where I felt like the previews didn't do it justice. No, but that was the same with the cure for wellness. What's Did you that see one? that one? No. <gasps> oh my god, it's wow, such a that good face movie. Was interesting. <laughs> such a Have good you practiced movie. that face? I think that's like my signature, like mm. yes face. Um, so, uh, a cure for wellness is directed by Gore Verbinski, who did um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. So that's the first uh, of it. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, the Preview of it makes 
no sense at all. And that's how I knew it was going to be a great film. But I also knew it wasn't going to make a lot of money because nobody understood what was happening in the trailer. Yeah, And it led very, yeah. like, it was brilliant. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard, like, with stuff like that because I really want them to do well. And then I'll show, like, my whole family. And they're like, I just don't think I understand the avant-garde and you are, have a particular taste. And I'm like, no, you just, like... You have to pay attention to it. Yeah. My family talks through everything, by the way. But I think there's a lot of films out there that are, like, junk food. Like, mm -hmm. it's kind of cheap and it fills you up for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, that's it. It doesn't really give you much to do. Yeah. Superhero movies to me are like that. And um, Nocturnal Animals, like, I was thinking about it, it was all like Thanksgiving day. Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. dinner. And then, no, it was like, <laughs> it was like Thanksgiving dinner, a cigarette, sex, a cigarette, and then going <laughs> yeah. out with your friends and getting drunk. That was what Nocturnal Animals was for me because yeah. it was just so good. And um, yeah. You've seen Nightcrawler, right? Yeah. Okay. Nightcrawler was good as well. There was something uncomfortable about the whole thing, and I think that's it's that like was Donnie on Darko purpose. grown up. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, if you let somebody like that out into the real world. Yeah, but he didn't really do anything, which is the interesting point. Well, he, he we're talking about um, Nightcrawler. Yeah, in Nightcrawler, he was given a task and did anything to accomplish that task. Yeah, he did he, what everyone was did, asking of him. He did, but he didn't do anything like... He well, never... Here's the thing. He didn't do anything good either. Like, when that... That's exactly what I mean. He didn't do anything. He did everything, but he didn't do anything. It's like he wasn't existing in the in the realm. But there. he was at yeah. the same time. Yeah. He was there to film it, but not really to... Yeah. Like... He didn't... He didn't help either way. No. Yeah. It wasn't good or bad. It was just right in the middle where right, he didn't but help. We wouldn't he walk didn't into make like it worse. A mur potential murderer's house and oh god damn it! Oh, you're getting a phone call, Mr. Popular. All right, hold on. All right, I'm gonna take this. You guys can listen. Okay, let's listen to his phone call. Hello, Andrew. Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Uh, I'm in a podcast right now. Oh, okay, have fun. <laughs> hey, uh, but yeah, we're we're still on for later. All right, seven thirty. Yep. Eight. See you, man. Hey, uh, am I getting beer? Uh, I can. I mean, do you want me to pick it up on my way out? If you, if, if you want to. Oh, yeah, oh okay. yeah, I want to. Hey, you know what? How about we just uh, we meet up and go to that cool little spot again? Where's that at? The the like the place that's like an old well or whatever. Oh yeah, do you know where, you know where it is? No, that's why we should we should just go. Okay, you want to go to my place and then meet over there or what? Uh, I don't know. I just felt like it's fun to pick out beers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I don't know how to. I know how to get there. <laughs> okay. I don't know the address. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, I'll just meet you at uh your lockout then. All right. Okay. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. All right. What well are you going to? <laughs> <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Yeah. Um. It's uh. <clears throat> it's not an actual well. It's like a. A building that has a oil rig thing on top of it, and they turned it into like a craft beer type thing. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I don't know where it's at, so. Yeah. God, so many disturbances. Sorry, I had to do like eight. Fucking A! Connection lost. All right, well, we're going to keep the podcast going as we get this going. Does that mean it just like stops the entire. Uh, I don't know. I'll uh I'll fix it. It says it's recording. All right. Here we go. It's blinking red though. It's blinking Wait, red. Wait, why does it need Wi Fi? Uh good question. You bitch. Not, not you, Alyssa. No, I know you're talking to be nice to it. I know. The good thing is we have the audio, so I can just splice in some other stuff in the middle of it. Uh, I don't know why she's blinking. I'm I okay. If anybody's ever seen my <clears throat> excuse me last podcasts, I uh, I broke one of my GoPros, and so I had to get a new one. And this one doesn't like me, like at all. And um, you know, just just dealing with that. All right, we're on again. We're on again. There's gonna be little gaps. I think if anybody like calls me or anything like that, it just 
cuts it off. Shuts itself off. So I'll have to figure that out sometime. Maybe it knows you killed its sister, and that's why it doesn't like you. Mm. AI is learning. Yeah. They're like, this guy's... Yeah. Nobody's watching this. <laughs> uh, okay, so we were talking about Nightcrawler and how nothing... Or he didn't really do anything. Like, he did, but he didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was a good movie. I Definitely one of my top ones. Okay, so what are your top five movies? Okay, that's such a hard question. No, it's not. Because okay. you know your favorite movies. I do. Um, <laughs> have you seen The Danish Girl? Mm-mm. Okay. With Dan- Saoirse? Danish Girl. What? With Saoirse? What's her name? Saoirse? Who's that? The redhead... Isn't that the one with the girl from Lady Bird? No. Oh, fuck. No. Fuck me. This is Eddie Redmayne and Alicia Vikander. Mm-hmm. It's about um, Eddie Redmayne plays this guy who goes through the first official like sex change and becomes a woman. Mm. Yeah, in like the 1900s. Sounds so like an good. easy procedure. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, oh my obviously God, it's not. Beautiful. Okay. Um. So that one, uh, the Danish Girl, um, the Breakfast Club. Nice. Love that movie. Classic. Uh, Girl Interrupted. Yep. That's yeah. a good one. Great fucking movie. Um, you know, I'm just going to throw the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie in there okay. because I love it. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to have to go with A Cure for Wellness. Okay, so we never really finished what that was about. Mm-mm. What is that one about? I don't even know. Oh, okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's um, like, to great interview. It, <laughs> and done. Um, no, to put it into a very simple, a very simple synopsis mm-hmm. is it's about this guy who I think, if I remember correctly, he works in accounting and his boss ends up going on this vacation, but is gone for like a month. So mm-hmm. then his other bosses send him to Germany to the wellness institute that he was staying at mm-hmm. to go and get him. Mm-hmm. But yeah. they're creepy. Yeah. And they're like running experiments on people and like tricking them into things. Mm-hmm. So then the the guy that was sent has to figure out how to get his boss out and get himself out because yeah. they've now committed him to this like asylum that's mm. actually being run. Yeah. So they like trick people into thinking that they're there for vacation, but they never leave. Yeah. But the, in the meantime, they're doing horrible things to them. Like, so is it like harvesting an, their organs? An essay on like America's obsession with prescription drugs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got real deep. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't know how you to go to take the edge off. That's and like ends up this, taking you. Y- yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's just being a dick. <laughs> I do that a lot. <laughs> Nothing new. Yeah. Um. No, that's like the simplest way that I can explain okay. it. But there's so much. Yeah. That's there and goes on and. Well, I couldn't even talk about it after I saw it. Like, I just had to process it for, like, mm. three days. I walked out of the Those movie theater, movies. and there was, like, a couple that was waiting to go in and see it. And they saw my face, and they were like, can you tell us what this movie is about? Because we have no idea what we're getting into. And I was like, honestly, I don't know what I just walked out of. I don't of. even know anymore. I don't even know. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> like, so right. I highly recommend okay. A Cure for Wellness. A Cure for Wellness. You need to watch it. I will. Get drunk and watch it. Don't get drunk and watch it. Just like watch it stuff. and then yeah, get drunk. I'm, I, yeah. Okay, watch it and then <laughs> contemplate life and get drunk. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good five. Was that five? I feel like that was that five. That was five. Yeah, that's a good wow, five. Wow, those are all really dark, too. Mm. Well, Pirates isn't. Breakfast Club Breakfast isn't. Breakfast Club isn't. Well, it has its tones. No. You leave all the depression in the 80s. It has its tones. <laughs> it has its tones. Bender's dad puts his fucking cigars out on him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but, you know. It was the 80s. Tortured. <laughs> yeah. Everybody likes to be heard Tortured a little bit. Tortured and fabulous. What we didn't know is that he was like, yeah, dad, do it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <clears throat> poor Bender. I mean, not if he, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That's, that's bad either way. Okay, want to know mine? Yes. I was going to ask, but you looked like you were thinking still about the cigar burns. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um... I have no childhood trauma, so. None of us do. None of us do. Um, favorite movies. Um, definitely Almost Famous. Okay. I love that one. Um, another one in the same 
sort of genre, Dazed and Confused. Mm-hmm. Um, fuck. That's a good one, too. I like This is 40 <laughs> a lot. Okay, so that's three. Okay. and Wait, I've seen that. That's a great movie. Paul Rudd, Leslie Mann. I love Paul Rudd. Yeah, so cool. I love Paul Rudd. Such a good dude. If he wasn't married, I'd marry him. If he wasn't married, I'd marry him. Yeah. And we'd slap Who some bass. Who wouldn't marry Paul Rudd? <laughs> slap in the bass! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man, he's he's great. I feel like there's ones that I should be, like... Oh, I love... Um, oh, my God, what's the fucking movie with James McAvoy and Keira Knightley? Um, oh. Why can't I think of this... It's a period piece. Yeah. Um, atonement. Yes. I love Atonement. That one, I'll sit and be like, oh my God. <laughs> I never knew it. That it was. Uh, yeah, that one fucking rattles my bones a little bit. That's um, good. What was that? Four? Was yeah, it that four? Was, that was four. So you have one more. Mm, I have one more. Fuck, I feel like I've seen some really good movies I have lately. two. That's why I don't like only naming five because I have so many. I'm going to throw Nocturnal them. Animals in there. Throw Nocturnal Animals in there because yeah, I wanted cause I to, but I already said Nightcrawler and yeah. I only had five spots. Yeah. What's the movie you've seen the most times? Out of all of those? Part- Just out of any. Oh. By choice. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the five or just any movie in general? Any movie. Or the five. The five <laughs> could be part of... Okay, out of the five then. What movie do I watch a lot? I don't watch like one certain mm. movie over and over. I guess if I was little, it would be Mean Girls. <laughs> I used to watch one. that on repeat, that and Beetlejuice. Ooh, that's another good one. Which is like completely opposite of each other. Yeah, anything that Johnny Depp's in, I'm pretty. I love. Johnny I'm pretty Depp. ready for. Yeah, I'd marry yeah. Johnny Depp. Oh, too. sorry. No, I'm gonna take Nocturnal Animals out and put What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Okay. Yeah, because that one. Yeah. I've never been able to watch that movie and not cry. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think I've actually ever seen it all the way through. I know. That's the door. <laughs> I'll show myself out. No, I was gonna be like, let's just stop the podcast. You got some time. <laughs> no, that movie's. I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. Leonardo DiCaprio did such a good job in that. He's so good. Yeah. I have so much respect for all of these actors. I just... Yeah. <sighs> What's your favorite TV series? Supernatural. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's in my most loved. I wouldn't call it a favorite. Well, I mean, considering I spent the last four months of my life binging all of it. Mm-hmm. So you are obsessive. I have my moments, but with certain things, I'm obsessive. I think, like, my obsess- my obsessiveness comes out in, like, the TV shows I watch because I'll only, like, if I watch a TV show, I have to watch it all the way through. Mm. It's like right now, since I finished Supernatural, I went to Frasier, and mm-hmm. now I've been watching, I've been, I've been binging Frasier. Never seen it. It's really funny. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Immediate judgment. Yeah. <laughs> No, I yeah, I'm sure it is. Frasier's good. I don't know. It was just like it was there. Yeah. And I remember seeing like certain episodes of it when I was younger. And I'm, now I'm just kind of like watching all of it. How many things in your life do you obsess over just because it's there? Did it get weird? <laughs> no, I'm actually trying to think. Mm. That I obsess just over it, just because it's there. Yeah. I'm assuming at least two. <laughs> Out of <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> out of everything in your life i don't know i don't know mm. what um i think it's like when i start something i have to finish it but then like on That's the other trait. hand i some things i start i have a really hard time finishing maybe because you don't like them but i do oh that's bad <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it goes back and forth i don't really know mm-hmm. i can go I- both ways <laughs> I'm that way with I'm that way with uh reading. Like I'll love a yeah. book. I'll love a book, but I'll never finish it. I have that issue. Yeah. But I've finished the last couple books I've read, so I had that issue before. I can't read um things that aren't nonfiction. I have to read things that like actually happened or yeah. like people's accounts of things. When I read books that are like not to be mean, but the one that you described to me where, like, they're, you know, got to go fight the witch. and they, Dune. Yeah, Dune. And they got to go ah. cross some magic bridge. The princes are very attractive in my head, so. Mm. So it's like a, uh, 
Who's that guy? The the long haired dude that's on the covers of all those books. Fabio. Fabio. <laughs> I was gonna say the Fonz. <laughs> the Fonz, not the no, Fonz. No, Fabio. Fabio. Um, but so I finish these books that are just made up stories, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, like, so. That's it. Like oh, the moral of the story is this. Like okay. But I feel like when I read things about like real people or real things that happen, it's like I have a better insight on like the world as it stands. Yeah. yeah. And I feel bad because I used to love fantasy style stuff growing up, but I just got so cynical and depressed. <laughs> and I Adulting. Can't, yeah. And so when I hear like a story where good defeats evil, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I feel that. I hate the the double climax thing that movies and books have. Oh, I love. I, I, if it's they, done like, right. No, it's so lame. If it's done right. You know how you do it right? You let the hero win. And then when they're like doing their whole like, can't believe we won. And then the villain person comes back, the villain wins. <laughs> that's the way you do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Then there are movies that that happens. I know. Depressing ones. Yeah. They're great movies. They're great movies. I like, I like... See, my problem with all these superhero movies and movies where everything ends well... Is that the hero wins? It's not just that. Like, I don't mind if the hero wins, if the hero learns, like, a lesson. But it seems that there's, like, no... I have to read books and and watch movies where the main character is flawed, pays a price, realizes they're flawed, and then overcomes... Mm-hmm. But most superhero movies, it's like, what's Superman's downfall? Like, he's... Kryptonite. And, and dating a toxic chick. But other than that... Well, who's... Who's not? Who's not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I just hit, hit some notes there. <laughs> no. Um, but... I don't know. I don't know what I like. I'm a, I'm a cliche. <laughs> because I'll I'll be like... With movies and books, I'll like things that are that are artsy or whatever. But then at the same time, I'll I'll like the corniest shit. Mm-hmm. Same. Just means you're well rounded. Mm. That's how I take it. Because mm. I can watch like almost anything. I can't. I have to walk out sometimes. Well, I almost did in the. I just went and I saw the remake. Not the remake. Um. This the addition to the strangers, the new one that came out like a week ago, two the weeks strangers? ago. They made it. You you remember the the horror movie, The Strangers, that came out in, like two thousand three. No, I don't really watch horror movies. They bore oh, okay. me. Okay, sorry. Well, The Strangers was really good. <laughs> okay. Um, and they made a re. They, it's not a fucking remake. They made. It was just so bad. Okay. They rebooted so the series. Out. Basically, I almost did. Mm. So is this like? Like a slasher, a thriller, a mystery. What is what is this? The second one, I have no idea what it is. What was the first like, one? Like literally, the first one was a house intrusion slasher film. See, yeah, I just it was so cool. It was so good. It was so good. Okay, I'll watch it because you said so. It was. But it's yeah. It'll like here, it'll be better than you think. Okay, but here's my dilemma. I don't as, recommend a lot of horror movies. So okay, good. That way I know you're not crazy. Yeah. All I watch is horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Um, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> Eye twitches. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as like somebody that pays attention to music a lot because it's a huge part of my day every day, when I watch a horror movie, it's like, <laughs> sorry, there's so many like ambulances this. going by. Yeah. Well, kind of. So here's the thing. I'll notice that um, in horror movies, when the music when they take out all the music in uh-huh. a film, I'm like, okay, well, something's going to happen. Yeah. Because they're like, there's going to be a loud bang. No one. Yeah, or something. Yeah. And so I can't like, I have no, I can't suspend my disbelief and like put myself in a different world. Or when you hear like like uh, a crescendo, things are like rising. Yeah. They're like building your tension. I'm like, yeah. okay, a good movie builds tension and doesn't need the aid of music. You can just build tension off of the situation. I can't remember correctly, but I don't think The Strangers uses music. Okay, maybe I think maybe it's I'll like silent. It. Had you ever seen Place Don't Beyond the Pines? Don't quote me. Okay, but no, yes, yes, I, I, Ryan Gosling. No, I haven't seen it. Okay, there's this part where he robs a bank and he rides away. He needs kind of to rob this bank. Mm-hmm. Okay, and he rides away on his motorcycle, and 
the whole time he's robbing the bank and riding away on his motorcycle, there's no music. Him robbing the bank, you just hear like everybody's breathing, everything going on. And then when he's riding away, you just hear the fucking motorcycle like cranked all the way. And for like a minute, you're like, just like, yeah. yeah. And then he finally gets to where he's supposed to go. He like hides out in the back of this like U-Haul and they drive the opposite direction. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah. And he like okay. starts throwing up like. Yeah. And I'm just like, yes, that yeah. is how it would happen. Yeah. You would just be like, fuck mm-hmm. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And just stressing out. And like mm-hmm. every noise would just be like super loud and intense because your adrenaline's going. Mm-hmm. And uh, my heart's racing thinking about it. But. Yeah. No, that was a good. I liked that. That scene especially. I don't remember the rest of it. But I remember that. It's really good. It's a good movie. People were pissed that Ryan Gosling wasn't in it longer. Be- Why, because he's Ryan Gosling? Yeah, they were like, where is he? He's pretty. <laughs> but I he- don't think he's pretty. I think I'm the only girl mm. on the face of the planet that's not attracted to Ryan Gosling. Maybe lesbians aren't. <laughs> <laughs> you not, and lesbians. No, lesbians. No, no. Like, um, I don't know. I just never, I'm not. Here's the thing. I think he is charismatic. Yeah, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say he's not handsome, though. No, he's good looking. Yeah. You're just not attracted to him. Yeah. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I like his abs. Okay. I just don't like his face. It, okay, let's put it to you this way. If he was not famous... And he looked the way he did, and he came up to you, and he was just as charming. I would, would think about it. Would you go on it. a date with him? I would think about it. It depend on what he would say, huh? Yeah, it would depend on what he was like, saying. Hey, girl, you trying to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl, come here. Trying to get this dick wet. I'd, that's so gross. Uh, I mean, I think about it, yeah, but I, I also don't want to like mislead somebody that I'm not attracted to. Right, yeah. That's just mean. Yeah. That's hilarious. Alyssa Morrison would turn down Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Watch him come up to me now and be like, hey, I heard you turned me down. Let's go on a date. Yeah. This is now a I long, stick to my decision. A long, long con of yours. You're like, he's not even that great. I don't even know. <laughs> like 10 years down the road, he's just like, I'm married to Ryan Gosling. Uh, right. Somebody else is. No, thank you. Yeah. He has a kid with, what is it, Eva Mendez? <sighs> She's so Okay. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so if they they've divorce, got a kid. Yeah. yeah. But would you want to be a stepmom? No. And then have his ex-wife be that hot? Yeah, that'd be really intimidating. Ooh, it'd be, like, it'd be I'm, really intimidating. Yeah. I'd be like, you're never visiting your kid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's no way you guys are going over there. And you, you are no longer the kid's mom. <laughs> yeah. Because the kid will forget about me. Yeah, no. Oh, man. Well, let's take a break. That's about 30 minutes. Okay. And then... uh. I need to pee. I've got such a small bladder. Okay, go. I watch Joe Rogan's podcast, and he like he sits there for three hours, and they're just drinking. Maybe he has a pee drinking. bucket. No, he's one of those guys that he's like, he's a little dorky in the way that he's like too proud of how much of a man he is. Like he takes pride in the fact that he can hold his pee that long, which you is could die. not good for you. Literally, yeah. a king yeah. in like the 1500s died because he held his fucking pee at a party for 12 hours. Like it was no 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 no. Okay, maybe it was longer than that. But he literally he did not get up once to go, and he kept drinking and drinking and drinking and drinking and like drinking. Let me put it to you this way: he died because he didn't pee. I feel like that's a lie. It's not okay. Let's walk through this this scenario. Let's Google it. Okay, Google lies. Okay, (laughs) um, your king. Let me say that again. You are in control of everyone and everything around you in the 1500s because they considered it rude. To Who? leave the party. What kind of party? A party of just kings? No, it was like a, he was throwing this party for his kingdom. If I'm the king and I'm throwing a party, I'll That's fucking, not how they thought about it in I'll, the 1500s. I'm telling you, this guy was fucking everybody's daughters. He was fucking He probably the, the was, nuns. and then he died because he didn't pee. I'm telling you, he, there's no way he would have that much pride. He would piss in his Were chair. Were you alive in the 1500s? I didn't think so. <laughs> Plot twist. <laughs> Well, Plot twist. how does I'm Google know? Was Google alive old. in the 1500s? I don't know. Probably research. Like, people wrote I, notes. I don't know. Okay. Was here, I alive? No. Here's what I'm going to... I'll I'll meet you in the middle. Okay. I'm going to suggest that he had some form of an STD or innard problem. Maybe. Yeah. And at that point, didn't realize... I don't think he would hold it out of pride or respect for people. I think he a would. A king in the 1500s, you I would fucking piss would. and shit anywhere and be like, deal with it, And bitch. maybe he did, and maybe that's why he died. He just kept shitting in the same spot. Yeah, and, the same and spot. not getting up. 
And then everything just got clogged. I don't know. I don't buy it. But I don't know. I'm just saying. Wait, better question. Why do you know this? I do a lot of weird research about <laughs> older eras. Yeah, got a thing yeah, for like older I know men. A lot about, 1500s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I I do. I like I like the 1800s a lot. Oh, it's so it's I, 18. I know a lot about like 1800s serial killers. Mm, that's kind of cool though. That's yeah. a good thing to pull out at a party. Yeah. That you won't I've get slapped a couple charged people with. with that knowledge, yeah. and they're like, "Why do you know this?" And I'm just like, "It'll make you remember me." Yeah, won't it? <laughs> I'm in a book club. <laughs> I'm in a book club. <laughs> oh man, can't wait to be old and say shit like that. Just you're any in a time. book club. Yeah, even if I'm not. Like I have pet bees. Yeah, <laughs> you get to be so dorky when you're old. It's so great. You can be dorky now. I am. Good. Yeah, but I mean, you can be like really dorky. Like really dorky. Have a window collection in your house, for instance. You could. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you could have like. We'll end it there. You. We'll end it on a burn. That was good. Thank you for that. You know what song I was thinking of? (laughs) What song were you thinking of? Um, dreams, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, sorry. I feel like. <laughs> really? Don't know that one? No, I don't know that one. All right, I'll show it to you. Okay. After this, I'll remember <laughs> because it's a good one. Well, it's I so good. I'm not like a Fleetwood Mac fan, I guess, so that's probably why. Sorry. Like you don't like them? I just don't listen to them. Okay. I'm not like, hey, I'm gonna go put on some Fleetwood Mac right now and clean my room. <laughs> it's just I don't. <laughs> that's. <laughs> I just don't do that. I literally did that the other day. Oh. Just that song. Good for just one song. Well, it was on a playlist, but I started the playlist off with that one. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't do that. I'm not you. You don't have to be. I feel like we ended this on a drag and then we started it with a drag. Yeah. No, we, we ended <laughs> it wasn't in really a, a heated drag, argument we did. about pee. <laughs> <laughs> this is always going to get derailed when you and I do these podcasts but that's fine yeah i I think it's at least entertaining on some i mean i hope so i have people that do message me about the podcasts like through instagram and we'll have a conversation about it they're listening hello 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 listener hello it me um it really helped putting it on itunes did it yeah my uh i got like a feed tracker and so it tracks all the listeners and stuff and it's like two to three times as many listeners as I get views on the YouTube video. Oh, that's cool. So, See, thanks. I thought iTunes was dead, but it's not apparently. Not podcasts. I mean, I listen to podcasts daily. I know a lot of people that listen to podcasts. Yeah. They're nice. I heard your beard scratch. I know. I <laughs> was thinking about that. <laughs> ASMR. ASMR. Did we do this last time? We did. <laughs> <laughs> We've got no new material, folks. <laughs> nope, it's all the same. Sorry about it. I dyed my hair. I think I didn't have a beard at that point. That's all that's changed. No, you did. You can log off now. Did I? I think you did. I'm not wearing a dad hat, and I don't have Starbucks this time. <laughs> yeah, not as basic this time. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, not kidding. Me. There's no way I can save myself from this. Um, so... The Leading Lady Web Series. Yes. Wow, we got really off track. Mm, yeah, P. Movies. My semen and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> movies. No, but the movies were, were good. I think it like I think a lot of what a podcast is supposed to do is to get you interested in somebody's personality and kind of entertain you for a little bit with, I don't know, listening to people that you would want to be hanging out with or just i don't know it's like being a fly on the wall kind yeah, of yeah which is nice to a conversation because when the conversation gets rolling i stop thinking about the fact that people are listening you know mm-hmm. it takes 10 minutes but then it just becomes a conversation yeah and uh that's when it gets weird because i get we- i'll make it weird yeah pretty quick well you'll speak your mind yeah i'm a narcissist that's why i have a podcast dun, 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 dun. I was hoping it would line up. It didn't line up. It but didn't, it's but it's okay. fine. We yeah. tried. All right. It happened. So, <laughs> Leading Lady web series. So, you were able to shoot all of it in, like, a day's time altogether. Well, the, ones, the, the scenes that I were in, yes. Okay, the scenes that you were in. How long did it take it 
before it was like edited and put up on the internet? We filmed it last June, mm -hmm. and then it just premiered in February. So is the goal for all of these sort of things, I mean, it, it's a stupid question, I guess, but I think it needs to be asked. Like, is the goal with things like this for it to uh, eventually get picked up or to impress and kind of like say, hey, we already have this thing we're doing. Yeah. Uh, like, do you know uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Like, they were just doing it with two camcorders mm -hmm. and they wrote it themselves and then they took it to, uh, was it Fox before FX? I don't know. But so is that kind of the goal with... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what the goal for Leading Lady is, um, the whole season is dropped and then what they want to do is they want to take it to like Hulu or Amazon or Netflix or somebody and see if anybody will bite at it. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're currently writing the second season. We're just kind of we waiting to see how it would do. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, I think it's done pretty well. I haven't checked yeah. up on it in like a week or two. Um, but <clears throat> we had a really good like cold opening. Um, so I think that's the next step is like taking the first season and pitching it. That's what they want to do. So they want to pitch right. it and see if anybody will bite. Yeah. Well, it was entertaining. I think that should be the the main goal. And it didn't seem like you guys were pretending to be something that already exists, which is nice. Yeah. I know yeah. I compared it to things, but you can compare anything to anything really. Yeah. And uh it it was something that I hadn't seen before, which was nice. That's good. Yeah, and um, something that I could see myself watching, uh, even if it was just a web series. And, but I'm biased. I know you, so it's like, go girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but um, so who's taking it to it? Would it be the director? Who, it like, would be Alex. Okay. I think Alex and Derek. Derek was the DP slash kind of the director as well. Um, I think they're probably going to take it and run with it. Um, what is DP Ashley mean? as well. DP, director of photography. So he was okay. the one that filmed everything. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so they take it, so they try to book meetings with people, or do they just send mm -hmm. stuff in? You a little know, bit of both, probably. A little bit of both, yeah. They, they, I think they send it in, but I think they also try to get meetings mm -hmm. with people. Um, I'm not sure how the whole pitch process works because that's more of like a producer thing mm -hmm. um which i should probably be more knowledgeable about do you have stuff that you want to create and film and pitch yourself i'm or? actually working on a screenplay so yes um <laughs> i'm working on a feature that's going to probably be super indie but i do want to end up finishing writing it mm -hmm. And then you probably should when it's written. I want to <laughs> cast it, yeah. and then uh, maybe film like a sizzle reel or do some scenes from it. And then actually, I think I want to. I think it'd be a good thing to pitch to Netflix. Nice, because I totally think they would buy it. So that's just a process, though. Cool. I don't want to talk about it. That's fine. No, I mean, because like I don't want somebody to steal your million dollar idea. No, I mean, I'm. I'm. That's fine. That's I'm fine just, if that's, they steal it. No, don't steal it. <laughs> it's my baby. But yeah. We're good. I saw that it was blinking red. That means it's recording. I can you see the I would know timer that. going. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I am currently writing something. Okay. Um, so hopefully that pans out. How hard is it for you to detach yourself from like the main character? Or do you not even think about that well, when you're writing? For me, it's like I'm writing these characters um and it's it's just one of those things where i'm not me anymore i'm just kind of writing as so and so okay or writing their world that they're in without necessarily like putting myself in that position and being like in control of it them me yeah right yeah that's hard for me to do i can't really write or do anything that doesn't like People immediately see the stuff that I've done and they've been like, okay, this is all about Drew. <laughs> Which I can't, I can't stop. I mean, I, what do I do? I write music. I film some things. Mm -hmm. I, I've written like a short novel. I've like, it's. That's but, cool. But no, because nobody's read it. But it's cool that you've done it. And then you read it and you're like, wow, I'm so fucking obsessed with myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, I just don't know how to detach myself from Got like. It. I don't want to write about anything that I don't know about. 
and I enjoy writing because then I get to see a side of myself maybe I didn't know, but it's I, I would never be a prolific writer for that reason. Like, yeah, wh- why does anybody want to read about me? I don't have anything that anybody else isn't going through. I'm not some kind of big grouch like Bukowski, and I don't have yeah drug problems, right? I'm I I don't I don't mm-hmm. think so. No, I don't. Okay, so I you don't. don't so. so that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I don't really know how to explain the writing process. Good. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's difficult, at least for me, because I've never written anything before. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I've gotten good feedback on what I've written so far, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily anything. Yeah. Good. You know what I mean? That's the problem that I have with things that I write, where it's like the the people that I know would like it, they like it, mm-hmm. but it does not ever reach a vast audience. I think I could, with practice, write something like a Judd Apatow film because those movies are usually rooted in real people that are a little quirky, but Mm -hmm. it it has a lot to do with who they are as a character. Mm -hmm. And it's not really driven by anything else other than like circumstance and the internal dream of each character. Yeah. And I think I understand that pretty well, but... The thing is, I want to film or write something cool. Yeah. Not just like... Something that people are going to be interested in. Yeah, like like Nocturnal Animals. That to me yeah. was like, uh, I was just like glued. Yeah. You know? And I was glued when I was watching This is 40, a Judd Apatow thing. Mm-hmm. But it was more like a vacation watching that movie. It was like, yeah. oh, this is sweet. Yeah. You know, this is, oh, this is life and it's sweet and it has good parts and it's hard, but it's good. Yeah, but it makes me happy. Yeah, it makes yeah. me happy. And uh, maybe I'm just depressed. No. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah, no, we've decided quarter life crisis yeah. for sure. And it's not, not even quarter life. Do I want to live to be 100? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know if I'd want to. I forgot my age the other day. How old are you? 24. Okay. I think. Oh, so you, you technically could have a... You think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technically, you could have a quarter-life crisis. I know a lot of people that have had quarter-life crises at 25. Mine just came when I was 21. That's not a quarter. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, it is if you only live to be 84. True. Which is pretty old. Yeah. I'd be okay with dying at that age. Yeah. It's not depressing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, Yeah. so, so um, our, our new bassist, he asked me how old I was because I asked him how old he was because I was bored on a Sunday and I was like, meet me at the Continental Room. Let's have some drinks and hang out and see these bands. And he showed up and he's like, yeah, I'm 21. I just turned 21. He's like, how old are you? And I was like, I'm... Fuck. <laughs> and he started laughing and it wasn't a joke to me i like had to do the math and i was like i've been telling people i'm 22 for the past two years <laughs> like, oh my god and um that was the first time in my life that i've ever forgotten my age the first time and now it's just gonna keep happening i know well you could just like continuously tell people that you're 22 forever yeah no <laughs> it wouldn't work <laughs> I met a girl that same Sunday, and she, when we were all talking as a group of people, I was like, how old are you? And she goes, 25, 26. And I was like... <laughs> you can't be bold. <laughs> yeah, which, which one? is it? I'm guessing it's 27, because <laughs> you're lying. Because no, you're um, lying. But no, but it was just like, fuck, I'm at that age now where like, I don't know my age. I'm just a Blink-182 song. Yeah. You are, and it's just going to get worse. It's going to get worse. I'm going to get more lame and cliche and just played out. Mm -hmm. It happens. I'm okay with it. Somebody's bumping. I know. It's that guy in the raised truck. Burn it down. With the small dick. (laughs) Drag him. I don't have to. He does by driving that. Yeah. Anyway, you're not wrong. So, so do you since we're on the subject of age, do you have a realistic fear of like getting too old for parts? Not really. Because you feel like yes you could no. fit in anywhere? Yes and no. I mean, with 
what I do, it's kind of a beautiful job because no matter what age you are, you could always work. Um, cause it, so a lot of the older actors, you know, they've been working for 20, 30, 40 years and now they're up in their 70s, 80s and they're still, still working. Yeah. But that's um, the top, top. Like, yeah, but I mean, look be... at like random shows where they have cameos where somebody's playing the grandmother or yeah. somebody's playing the drunk old lady at the bar. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's still, there's a role for everybody at every age. And you're okay with being the drunk old lady at the bar or I the mean, grandma? If... So you actually love acting then? Yeah. Okay. So. Like, if I could do the roles Meryl Streep is doing now at her age, when I'm her age, that would be amazing. Yeah. That's the goal. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm not going to be Meryl Streep, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, if it got to that point, I Mm -hmm. would be happy doing the roles that she's doing at her age. Mm -hmm. You know? Just because of how old you are doesn't mean that you can't bring the depth or the reality of this person that you're portraying. Right. I just... It's... I applaud you because it's so hard to, I guess it's the same with music as well. But like, I just, if I was an actor, I I wouldn't want to be doing like a life alert commercial, you know, when I'm, yeah, you know, I'd you want to be doing something that you feel like, feel deeply for. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm not going to keep pursuing the band thing if I'm, you know, I feel like you can keep trying in your 40s but once you turn 50 it's like all right now it's just you and your little old men like playing music together in a garage and like playing a like a a farmer's market like yeah (laughs) it's it gets embarrassing at a certain point that's my fear is like it'll be like nobody will want to listen to the things i'm creating because it'll just be like oh look at that old man because of an instant judgment yeah yeah Plus, I have no idea how I'm going to dress. <laughs> like That could be the embarrassment in itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that going up now, though, so I don't think that's ever going to change. You feel that with the way you dress now? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, my God, I have to sneeze. <coughs> Woo! Bless. Excuse me. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll go out in a fucking Snuggie, and, like, that's just... Yeah, but you've already decided snuggie. you're okay with it. I know. I've, no, it's, it's a onesie. Life. <laughs> yeah, going on a Snuggie would mean your ass is showing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I change my answer. Okay. I, yeah, a onesie. Okay. But I mean, you think about it. That's also yeah. like an instant judgment kind of thing where you're like, oh, people are going to judge me because I'm going on in a onesie to like the supermarket. Yeah. My aunt used to give but- me such a hard time because I used to wear slippers everywhere. Slippers, it's not that attractive, but girls can rock I wore a fucking slippers snug, to my or, mom's um, wedding when I was 14. That's hot. That's a protest. No, maybe 13. It might be. That's a protest. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Um, no, but I mean, the slippers are, it depends on what else the girl is wearing. It could be. Regular clothes or pajamas. There's no in between. There's, there's some hot, like crack whores out there and that they rock the slippers and then like normal clothes <laughs> but <laughs> but a onesie like- is pretty most most girls in their 20s look really good in a onesie you know what i mean like that's you won't be judged like i mean yeah i guess it's like a college thing. yeah they're not gonna be like but you see oh. it more on like a college campus than you do like out in public like i don't yeah. go to college i'm not on a college Same. campus doing this i'm just they don't know literally that. out you're studying for your master's to be a neuropsychologist that's what I'm going to tell people. A neuropsychologist would be a brain brain. Yes. <laughs> I just like said the same thing. Brain brain studier. A neuropsychologist. A neurosurgeon. That's the word. Neurosurgeon. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe there's a neuropsychologist out there somewhere. That's just a psychologist. Yeah, but maybe that's what he calls himself. I'm a neuropsychologist, rocket scientist. Yeah, and I wear onesies to fresh and easy. Yeah. Do they even have those anymore? The one right down the street from here, it closed. I don't know. I haven't seen one in ages. Nothing's ever fresh and easy. Mm -mm. (laughs) (laughs) If it's fresh, it ain't easy. Nope. I don't know. Or if it is fresh, don't go for things that are fresh. Let's strike that. Just don't go for things that are fresh. That seems young. I feel like that's a code word for young. Yeah. Hey, girl, you looking fresh. (laughs) That could be a good compliment. 
Okay, so what's what's the deal? <laughs> You're gonna use that next time you go out. Gonna, I'm not. I'm really not. Girl, you look impressed. I do not hit on women. I just don't. No. No, it's too dangerous these days. Yeah, it is. I just don't. They'll have to hit on me, and I'll be like, I'm okay with this. Consent. This is consent. Me telling you. See, I think yeah. that's my issue. I never get hit on because a, I feel like I'm just awkward in general, and b, like I'll, I just like think if I go up to a guy and be like. If you do that, hey, how's it going? <laughs> what you drink? I just feel like that would just be like, I don't know. Okay, let me put it to you this way. You could do that to any guy in a bar, and they would definitely take you home, and they would fuck you. The thing is, you don't want to do that to every guy in a bar. No. Girls can girls could have sex whenever they wanted. That's just the fucking truth. But they'd be having sex with people that are missing teeth. That are just horrible people on the inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh-huh. Yeah. So, and that's not the end goal. No. No. If it was just to get off, which is probably people would just masturbate. But that's, yeah. But that's like everybody nowadays. I feel like nobody like actually wants anything anymore. It's just called kind of like. I think a, people just want company. They just fill the void. Fill the void. Tend to the void. Don't just fill it. Tend to the void. Don't fill it. Well, yeah. I mean, but not a lot of people see that either at least right now i just don't want somebody to fill my void (laughs) no i'm serious like i don't want to like need anyone i want to want somebody yeah but i don't want to like need them yeah i want to be with them because i'm like oh i want to hang out with this person not because like oh shit i you know they bought me a car <laughs> I don't know like <laughs> <Yeah>. actually cougars <laughs> hello I am willing no I'm wink not. at the GoPro there we go <laughs> <laughs> that's great um I just complimented myself by the way and <laughs> no but it's just first of all love doesn't make sense but companionship is a science like there yeah there are things that you have to do to like get along with people and not hate each other but i think people are really just looking for somebody else to take care of them <clears throat> yeah and that's a big no-no mm-hmm. you know what i mean that's not gonna work man you mm-hmm. gotta take care of yourself but it's so much like easier said than done yeah i don't even know what i don't even know I don't even know. There's no rhyme or reason to like attraction, but I feel like people, when they get a certain amount of desperate, yeah. they'll do almost anything. Yeah. And that's bad. Have you heard of NoFap? No, what is that? Okay, so NoFap is a community of people that are convinced that pornography is creating... um dangerous patterns in your mind for like how to treat people or how you view other people they'll say like if some, if you're watching porn daily your perception of another human gravely goes down it's altered yeah so no fap they're like if you go i think it's like 90 days without masturbating you'll like reset your neural pathways so, so your thought process about humans like goes back to normal, like if you don't watch porn or masturbate. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like it's the same sort of argument as saying if you play violent video games, you're gonna go kill somebody. Yeah, it's like no, I play Grand Theft Auto when I'm drunk and I laugh when I run over the hooker on the side of the road, <laughs> but it's just, it's fake. It's not real. I don't have a desire to do that. I mean, I do, but I have the desire to do that in a video game. Yeah, you know? not in real life. I don't want to have sex with eight women at once. I sincerely do not. That They would just laugh. I would be like, I am so sorry. It's yeah. just, I've <laughs> never seen this many naked women in one, <laughs> one room. I, I tried. I tried. I showed up. That's all that yeah. matters. Yeah, I showed up. No, but... Yeah, we we don't actually want to live out some of the things that we see in porn, but I think that it's valid. It's just, I don't think it matters as much as people think it matters. No. They say you can have sex, though. Like, if you're actually having, like, human-to-human sex, it, like, counts. Like, like, you won't reset your, like, days that you've gone without masturbating. 
So you can like go 30 days without masturbating or porn, have sex. And then they say that like it's still healthy for your brain. Because you're actually like doing a real thing. Yeah, with somebody else. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't think there's any science behind any of this. I think it's just somebody ma- said something and they're like, that makes sense. Let's start a thing. Yeah. I don't think it's wrong, but I do know some... Okay, the reason why I brought this up is that I said that some people get super desperate and they yeah. do things that maybe they shouldn't. Are there like seagulls or something? I was just something? thinking the same thing. Those are crows. Oh, no, they're little kids at the baseball field over there. You thought they were seagulls. <laughs> it's far. It's okay, I said crows. It's fine. Yeah. Um. So, like, you'll get desperate and just do something that you regret. Yeah. And I've seen... So many people do. I've done this myself. Like, you just do something, you're like, fuck, I should not have done that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I don't know. I, I always heard masturbation was healthy. Yeah, but if you're doing it, like, 24, 25 times a day, then if, you got a problem. If you're doing it because you're bored, it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're doing it to, like, ease something, then that's better. That's fine. Yeah. But also, No. Because it's like, if you smoke pot because you're having a bad day, and you smoke pot every day when you're having a bad day. Smoke weed every day. It's like you're just putting a Band-Aid on a bigger problem. And if you yeah. are longing for human yeah, like interaction, confronting, yeah. and then you decide to watch porn three times a day instead of going outside and meeting somebody, I feel like it's going to be bad for you. You're not wrong, but, like, there are people that also have, like, issues where it doesn't make sense to them to do that. What do you mean? But that's touching on, like, a deeper... What are you talking about? Like, okay, um, if... Like, let's say somebody has really bad social anxiety, maybe, and doesn't have Mm -hmm. the confidence to go out and, like, talk to women. So the only thing that he can do is, like, masturbate to get... I love that it's a guy. Or a girl. Okay, (laughs) a guy or a girl. And they just, like, they have that issue, so it's hard for that. It's harder for them to go out Mm -hmm. um, and, like, meet people and, like, try to fill that, like, Mm -hmm. need. You know? Like, it's not just, like... How do I explain this? Yeah, I know. It's it's not that they're just doing it just to like get off. It's doing it because they're they're it, it is filling a void, but it's doing it. I think masturbating's fine to an extent. Yeah, I mean, if you're like addicted to it, like like if you have an addiction so, or so. What do, what would we at this table define as an addiction to porn? Like, how often is an addiction? Like, if you're do, spending all day. Oh. <laughs> Or, yeah, because I guess you could probably well, know, watch because, porn once a day but still not be addicted if you're doing it in a healthy way. Yeah. Some people have really huge sex drives, I mm-hmm. guess. I don't know, but I still feel like if you're doing that every day and you've just got a large sex drive, that you eventually will be looking at somebody in the supermarket and just think about fucking them eight different ways. Yeah. And it's like... Why don't you say hi first <laughs> and like before thinking about that? Recognize they're a human that like maybe has like a husband and or has like traumatic past and mm-hmm. doesn't need to be I don't know fuck. But then it doesn't really hurt them in any way if you're just thinking about it. See, this is the thing; it can go either way. I think I think the reason why this is even a conversation is that. If you do anything excessively, it's bad. It's bad, yeah. So they're like... You have to be able to deal with it in a healthy way. Like, yeah. lesson of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. What did we accomplish? I don't know. I think what we have accomplished with this, which is what I think most of the podcasts I've done have accomplished, is that... Uh, I kind of brought it up before, but people know you a little bit better now. If they listen to your podcast, the first one that you were on, and they listen to this one, they now know you better and they probably will think of some of the stuff that you've said and like incorporate it into their lives whether or not good or bad but they'll just like they'll recognize you more you know what i mean yeah but i don't know what i've said that's been any sort of (laughs) memorable (laughs) the podcast the last one was super funny i listened to that one like two or three times i was like 
okay, these podcasts are fun where it's like you're not taking it too seriously. Yeah. Because I could like do work and then listen to it. But when I say I listen to it two or three times, I sound like a fucking <laughs> obsessive crazy person. I listen to my old podcast. Let me put it to you this way. I have to listen to it all the way through yeah. to do the audio editing, and then I have to listen to it all the way through with the video matched up to it. So that it and makes then, sense. And then so when it I sinks. put it like on YouTube or you iTunes. You have to make sure it uploads so it's all the yeah. way clear. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I listen to our podcast like eight times. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I feel you. Anyway. I think that's it. I think we accomplished something. <laughs> I don't know. We're not just like deep in thought. How do you feel? Addictions. I feel fine. I feel fine. All right. I guess I'll wrap it up. Um, so April 1st, I have a show that I'm throwing at the Continental Room in Fullerton. That is Easter Sunday and April Fool's Day, but it's not a joke. Woo! And so uh, hang out with your family. Let them stress you the fuck out like you know they will. Then come and party. Uh, it's going to be Slugs from L.A., Family Cash Band from L.A., and Bundy from Long Beach. They're all fucking great. And if you participate in our $1 raffle, you have the chance to win merch from all of the bands and $100. Nice. So come party. Please come party. And I know it's hard to get out, but especially on that day when your family's stressing you out, come party. Take the day off the next day. Just do it. Uh, also, go buy my shirts so I can support my sugar mamas. No, that doesn't make sense. Fuck yeah, it up. Why, I how would say, you support your sugar mamas? <laughs> with <laughs> They're this your dick. sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I usually say baby mamas, but I butchered that fucking joke. <laughs> anyway. Maybe everybody's just making money. So everybody's, it's all just <laughs> everybody's making money. Everybody's making money. But yeah, go buy some t-shirts. Um, also watch Leading Lady Web Series on YouTube. Do it. And uh, if anybody knows anybody in the higher ups, you know, tell them to watch it. Yeah, yeah. why not? It's a good little No, don't thing. actually, because they'll just watch it and then grit, get their own actors together and like rip it off. Oh, That's yeah, don't do. rip it off. Yeah, don't rip it off. Anyway. I'll th- find you. <laughs> she will too. Sometimes I think I see her in the shadows. <laughs> they don't call me Shadow Lady for nothing. <laughs> that was creepy. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, thanks for coming on. Of course. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. After a music or something.